Lincoln's Inn Fields, London RCAF headquarters, becomes permanently Canadian as a maple tree donated by the mayor of Ottawa is planted by Mayor Mullen of Hoburn in an historic ceremony. Royal Canadian Air Force, General Mullen! <laughs> mayor addresses the gathering. The presentation of this tree was a happy thought. How better can one express the endurance and the completion of friendship? Mayor Mullen praises the RCAF as one of the most deadly striking forces in aerial history. The tree represents something of the life which has been given so gladly and well by the sons and daughters of Canada in the common fight for freedom. On the Western Front, Deputy returning officers visit frontline troops to record their votes in the Alberta election. The government created three seats in the Alberta legislature to be filled by candidates elected by and of the services. There is one seat for each branch, Navy, Army and Air Force. On a forward gun position, a sergeant casts his vote. His ballot will swell the total for one of 22 candidates nominated by Army Albertans all over the world. Any 25 soldiers from Alberta were entitled to nominate a candidate for their legislature. An efficient organization gives every soldier an opportunity to exercise his franchise. Full printed instructions are handed out to avoid spoiling the ballot. On completion of his rounds, the deputy returning officer returns to his army poll. He places the ballots in an envelope. It is sent by registered mail to London, where it is received by the returning officer. In Italy, the army polls are jeeps. The same procedure is observed as on the Western Front, the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, Iceland, or any other place where Albertans in the army are entitled to vote. One candidate makes a personal appearance before his billet in northern Italy. In London, ballots are received from the field. Votes from the three services are counted under the direction of the returning officer. A report is sent by air to the chief returning officer in the Legislative Assembly. Thus, democracy fulfills its functions in the Canadian Army. In the main town square of Ravenna, northern Italy, a red and green service station is open for business. All the fixings of a Canadian gas dispensary are in evidence, even the advertisements. s and is, of course, the abbreviation for supply and transport, an important branch of the RCASC. 
Designed for vehicles of a transient nature, hundreds of jeeps and station wagons are serviced each day. Service with a smile is the motto of the red and green. You don't have to give the attendant a cigar. When you say, fill her up, there's no worry about coupons or the payoff. It's on the government. The sponsor of the idea, Colonel McQueen of the Army Service Corps, tries out his super service. Unlike Civvy Street, the big buggies get just the same service as the lowly flivver. No more, no less. It's as much as your life is worth to ask for petrol. It's gas to you. You're at a Canadian service station now. The big boss is so pleased with his first attempt that he plans bigger and better gas emporiums and more of them. Soon, the road to Berlin will be brightened at every mile post by a red and green gas station. Speeding with good old Canadian service, the highway to victory. On the Canadian front in the Italian Apennines, the weather follows the lead set by Canada, England and Holland. Record snowstorms play no favorites. All transport, both the enemy's and our own, is well snowed under. Canadians are happy to see snow wherever they are. But there's a limit to any good thing. Getting out and pushing is the limit. There's no rest for the hard-working bulldozer. We've seen it build roads, push over buildings, clear forests, and ford rivers. Now, it's a snowplow. back home again and wifey asks you to shovel the snow off the front sidewalk, just remember to count three before you tell her what to do with the snow. In northern Italy, Canadian armor storms north to attack Reno River position. With all organized resistance eliminated east of the Senio, our extreme eastern flank moves forward. San Alberto, an enemy key position, is attacked by tanks and mortars. Bailey bridges, constructed under enemy small arms fire, speed the movement. Four point two mortars go into action to clear out enemy infantry. Every step of the way is bitterly contested. Jerry is blown from his positions by our superior firepower. counter-attack, machine gunners wait until Jerry is within 15 feet of the Browning gun before opening fire. The abortive attack ends in complete defeat with 500 enemy casualties. A bag of over 200 prisoners is taken. As the captured area of San Alberto is mopped up, Canadian spearheads move into the Valley di Camaccio. Grimly, they batter their way deeper into the Po Valley towards their next objective, Ferrara. 